Psalm chapter 2 holds a special place in the collection of biblical psalms as it addresses themes of kingship, the sovereignty of God, and His plan for the nations and their rulers. It provides an insightful commentary on the rebellion of earthly powers against divine authority and the ultimate triumph of God's anointed King. The psalm can be divided into four distinct sections, each presenting a perspective on the rebellion against God and His appointed King. The psalm begins with a rhetorical question, Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? This question sets the stage for a dramatic scene where the nations of the earth and their leaders conspire and take a stand against the Lord and His anointed. This anointed one is traditionally understood as the King of Israel, but from a fuller perspective, this figure points to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The psalmist seems perplexed by the futile efforts of the rulers who oppose God's sovereign plan, emphasizing the absurdity of rebelling against the Creator. The second section shifts to God's response to such rebellion. He is portrayed as sitting in the heavens, undisturbed and unthreatened by the puny attempts of earthly rulers to challenge his authority. His reaction is to laugh and scoff at their plans. This divine response highlights the disparity in power between God and human rulers. Despite their arrogance and plots, they are utterly powerless compared to the Almighty. God's laughter is not one of amusement but of derision, underscoring the ludicrous nature of their revolt. Following this, God speaks and declares His decree. He has installed His King on Zion, His holy hill. This is a pivotal declaration as it affirms that despite the opposition, God's plan remains unaltered. The King, referred to here, is endowed with authority from God Himself, emphasizing His divine appointment. This section of the psalm underscores the unbreakable bond between the Lord and his anointed, revealing that any opposition to the king is, in essence, opposition to God himself. The final section of the psalm shifts focus to the words of the anointed king himself. He recounts the decree of the Lord, proclaiming his adoption as the Son of God. This adoption is not in the familial sense, but signifies a special relationship of favor and authority. The king is granted nations as his inheritance and the ends of the earth as his possession. This is indicative of a vast dominion, suggesting a rule that extends far beyond the borders of Israel, encompassing the whole earth. The rule of the anointed king is described as firm and resolute, where he will break down the rebellion with a rod of iron and shatter the opposing forces like pottery. The psalm concludes with an admonition to all kings and rulers on earth to serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. They are advised to submit to the Son, to kiss Him, lest they perish from the way when His wrath is kindled but a little. This imagery is potent, encapsulating both the danger of opposing God's anointed and the safe refuge found in aligning with Him. The ultimate blessing is pronounced on all those who put their trust in Him, highlighting the protective and benevolent character of God's rule through His anointed. In essence, Psalm 2 serves as a profound reflection on the nature of human defiance against divine governance and the futility of such resistance. It reassures the faithful of the stability and security found in God's sovereign plan, emphasizing His control over all earthly powers. The kingship of God's anointed, viewed through the lens of the complete biblical narrative, finds its fulfillment in Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate King, ruling with justice and righteousness. The psalm calls believers to recognize the supremacy of God's rule, urging us to serve Him with a posture of awe and find refuge in His anointed Son. Thus, Psalm 2 not only serves as a historical or prophetic text, but also as a timely reminder of the sovereignty of God in the affairs of men and the certainty of His victory 
over all forms of human rebellion. It speaks directly to the heart of every believer, urging us to trust in God's ultimate plan and submit to His rule with reverence and joy.